worthy of note that the 2018 UFA class is going to be seen as big because there's big names on it. But in between now and July 1st, some guys are going to get signed who are currently with their teams. So, for instance, when you see Joe Thornton, I don't expect Thornton to go anywhere except San Jose, where he signed there for one more year. I think he's done. Uh, the Sedins as well. I don't expect to see them move. Those guys will stay the same. Uh, Chara is another one. I can't. I can't see Chara playing anywhere other than Boston. Um, who else doesn't move? That's probably it. In terms of veterans. So what you're left with when you take those guys out of it, okay? You're left with Nash. So Rick Nash right now is. I might as well put up their ages because that's going to make a difference. He's 33. So you got to figure two or three year deal. He's not going to make the 7.8 million he's making this year. So where does he go? Because I, I can't see him back in Columbus. I'm not going to get into where all these guys are going to go because it'll just get crazy. And we have till next June. So Nash Nash is on the list as, as a UFA. He's likely going to go out as a rental. Um, Stastny's interesting. So Paul Stastny is 31. So he's going to be looking for a TJ Oshi kind of deal. He'll be looking for a lot of money over a long period of time. And somebody will give it to him because that's the way it works. Um, he's having a good season. He's having one of those contract seasons. He's got 12 points in 15 games. And honestly, he will probably get... Uh, he's getting $7 million now. I would think $6 million per is probably where he's going to end up at the end of this. But I wouldn't be surprised to see it get turned into a bidding war and him go up to 7 Um Interesting one here is Plakanich. So Plakanich in uh, Montreal, he's 35. If he goes anywhere, it's going to be a one-year deal. It's not going to be for a lot, and I wouldn't be surprised if he stays in Montreal. I would not be surprised in the slightest. Another interesting one is Mike Green in Detroit. So Green is 32. And he knows it's a contract year. He's got 13 points in 16 games. A lot of assists. Only one goal. And he was known earlier in his career as a goal-scoring defenseman. That didn't really stick around as being part of his game. So Green is a guy that I could definitely see getting... Well, what's he getting now? He's getting five... No, he's getting six million a year. He could get a raise, I guess. He's an interesting one. What is, what is Green worth right now? To Detroit, he's worth a lot. But as a UFA, are you just going to look at his points this year? Let's say he stays on this pace, gets 45, 50 points. Do you just pay him based on that, or do you look at the seasons previous and go, ah, he's 32, those years before that matter, we're only going to offer a max amount of money. So that's just looking at it from a money point of view. Let's look at it from who score, who's scoring the most points among soon to be unrestricted free agents so I don't know again so in terms of unrestricted free agent which is fun to deal with the, the big name is Johnny Boy John Tavares who's only 27 he's got 12 goals in 14 games I'm going to get into the cap hits. So he makes $5.5 million right now. He's worth a lot more than that. He's going to get a lot more than that. He's been playing above his pay grade for the last, at least the last three years. Tavares likely will get, I'm going to say, $12 million a year. And Tavares, in order to stay in New York, he's got to see that the team is going to is going to fix their arena issue. There's a large arena issue, of course. So that's what he's going to be looking for. What's interesting is, what's really interesting is, his line mate. And we're not hearing a lot about this either. Josh Bailey is 28. He currently makes $3.3 million. He has 18 points too. 15 of them are assists. 
So these guys are helping each other to big paydays. So the question I have is, does somebody try to offer both of them? Is there a team out there with, with cap space looking at you, Arizona and Carolina? Is there a team out there with cap space that would say, this is our chance to really remake ourselves, and are these two guys playing themselves into huge paydays? Everybody talks about Tavares. Tavares is the big news. The big, is he going to re-sign in, in New York? Maybe he wants to see Bailey stick around too. Maybe the fact that Bailey's got 15 assists and Tavares has 12 goals, maybe those things aren't a coincidence. Maybe he wants to see them uh, commit to both of them. How much does Bailey get? How much is Bailey worth? Is it just a hot streak? We'll find out. Then there's Mark Stone. Mark Stone somehow is a UFA at 25 years of age. He has 16 points in 14 games. And he makes $3.5 million. Now, Ottawa just severed ties with Kyle Turris for wanting $6 million over six. This may be why. That $6 million over six may end up going to Mark Stone. I do not anticipate Stone hitting the UFA market. I could see Bailey or Tavares because it's the Islanders. And I don't bet for or against the Islanders on anything because they are so unpredictable. But I could see Stone being re-signed quickly here. Moving out tourists, bringing in Duchesne, who's signed for next year, may very well be so they can get Stone locked up long term. He's he's a beast out there, and I can't see him leaving. Now, next on the list is Green, so I'm gonna I'm gonna skip Green, and then the the big name at the top of everybody's he's most likely to get moved list is Evander Kane. He's 26. His cap hit is seemingly high, 5.25 million. So again, we're looking at UFAs that are all in their mid to late 20s. The weird thing is, it wasn't that long ago when your your big name UFAs were 31. 30, 31, maybe 32. Now we're at the point where 25 and 26 is the age. So how much is Evander Kane worth? Evander Kane right now has 7 goals, 6 assists, 13 points in 14 games. And the question becomes one of how much is he worth? Now... If he stays in Buffalo, which right now would probably be my guess, Buffalo has a lot of cap space. Well, they have sufficient cap space for him, and he works there. Buffalo, I, I really think there's a lot made of, of Buffalo with Evander Kane, but I wouldn't be surprised to see him stick around. Uh, they've, they've got Eichel locked up long term. Uh, they don't have to worry about O'Reilly, and I, I really I can't see Kane moving on. Because the thing is, for them to trade Kane, they have to get market value back. What do they want back? They're going to want back defensemen. Maybe they'll want a goaltender if Leonard doesn't pick it up. But Buffalo has a lot of holes, and I don't think they want to create another one by trading out Evander Kane, which is what they'd be doing if they traded Evander Kane. So him being at the top, top of a trade bait board, uh, uh Next on the list is Paul Stastny. I already talked about him. An interesting one is James Neal in Vegas. So Neal's 30. He's currently making a very manageable $5 million. It's funny how a good start turns James Neal from expensive to affordable, right? Um, Vegas can afford to keep Neal. I think Neal's happy in Vegas. I wouldn't be surprised to see James Neal stick around Vegas. I wouldn't be surprised to see James Neal in Vegas for another five years. I wouldn't be surprised to see it. Remember, this is George McPhee. George McPhee is... is in his time in Washington, and I'll get into that, I'll do a video of, of George McPhee in Washington. Um, I, I, I sometimes questioned his handling of prospects, but in terms of his handling with veterans, I never really had a problem with it. I think he'll give Neil a very generous offer, and I'd be very surprised if Neil hits the market. So in terms of guys that I don't think hit the market, I don't think Stone or Neil hit the market. Kane probably gets moved at the deadline and signs long-term wherever he goes. So the only ones I could see hitting the market are Bailey and Tavares. And Tavares, it's going to depend on what the Islanders do. See where I'm going with this, right? Um, next on the list is, of course, the always talked about in Canada, JVR. And he's 28, which makes him right in this, this attractive territory in terms of who you're going to pick up and what you're going to get for him. He's got a very manageable cap hit of $4.25 million right now. So JVR is going to get a large raise. He's not going to get it in Toronto. Or is he? 
See, all the talk about JVR going out was because uh, Nylander and Marner and Matthews were going to get these huge raises. Well, Matthews is going to get that huge raise. What if Nylander and Marner don't? Nylander has been criticized by Babcock again. This is two years in a row that Nylander has been criticized by Coach Babcock. And, and Marner is not scoring on a very high pace. So what if they can afford to keep JVR? What if, what if, you're, what if you're, you're, you're throwing out the baby with the bathwater? JVR is a 30 goal, 30 assist, 60 point forward at 4.25 million. He's going to get a large raise. I really honestly would be very surprised if Toronto keeps him. And not only that, I don't think he'll hit the market either. Because if they can't sign him, they will trade him to somebody who will more than glad, more, be more than glad to sign him. Sort of like Kyle Turris with Nashville, where Nashville gave him long-term um, comfort. An interesting one on this list, who I think will hit the free agent market, is John Carlson. And John Carlson, I think, will hit the market because he's 27. He's making $3.96 million a year, and it's all sixes and sevens at the end there. Uh, he just keeps going. Um, Carlson is a defenseman who right now has 11 points in 15 games, and yet I always feel like I want more from John Carlson. Maybe I expect too much of John Carlson, but I, I really think he's going to drive the market. I think that as a 27-year-old defenseman putting up almost a point a game, he can write his own ticket. This can easily double. I think he can get seven and a half, eight million from somebody who's crazy. Uh, we had very reasonable cap hits and, and contract given out this past summer. I'm not betting on it keeping up for two years straight because notice, a lot of these key guys are have X's, question marks. I don't think a lot of marquee guys are going to be out there. There's a lot of teams looking for help in their top four. So I would be shocked if Washington doesn't trade him. I would be stunned if Washington doesn't trade Carlson as a rental at the deadline. Even if they're in a playoff spot, I think they'll they'll look at what the Blues did last year with Shattenkirk, ironically to them, and say, you know what? We feel that losing Carlson will hurt us, might pull us out of the playoffs, but we'd rather not lose him for nothing after the playoffs are over. So Carlson gets moved out. But I think Carlson's going to do what Shattenkirk did. I think wherever he goes, I think he's going to say, all right, I'm hitting the market. I, I can't see... With his chance for a payday that could be as long as an eight-year contract. With a contract that could be as high as, say, $56 million over that term. Or $60 million over that term. I can't see him not going with it unless he ends up being traded to a team that can either A, already afford him, afford him that money. Or B, a team that looks like they're going to win a Stanley Cup. And he could be a big part of it. Toronto will be all in on Carlson. And this is an obvious trade option is JVR to Washington for Carlson, and then you'd have other pieces in there. But I'm just, just throwing that out there. Don't don't quote me on it, because that would be crazy. Um, an interesting one... An interesting one is Perron, and they still list him here as being a member of the Blues, which is odd, but we'll go with it. Uh, Perron is listed as... He's still only 29, which is odd, because, again, I would expect him to be a lot older than 29. Uh, Perron is absolutely one of those under-the-radar guys. He will likely get this same cap hit again. Might get four, maybe four and a half if there's, if there's a bidding war. But he's very underrated. And he's done a lot for Vegas this year. And uh, I honestly think that it'll be interesting to see where he ends up in terms of cap hit. Um when, when Vegas got him, I thought, wow, they, they got a 20-goal scorer. Most expansion teams don't get 20-goal scorers. And they got March or so as a 30-goal scorer. And Riley Smith is a 20-goal scorer. And, you know, it, it's a lot of offense for an expansion team. But, you know, we'll, we'll see how that turns out for him. Now, with skaters out of the way, what about the goaltender market? Well, the goaltender market is usually iffy with free agency. But that being said... There are some interesting names, and of course, goalies are usually older when they hit unrestricted free agency because goalies hit the league later. So first on the list would be Halak, who at $4.5 million, I think will probably get a cap hit in that range again. Somebody will take a, a flyer on, on Halak. Somebody somewhere is going to say, all right, he's, he's still capable of being a starter in the league, and he'll get around that amount of money to prove it. Uh, sort of like what Steve Mason got with Winnipeg this year. And I, I don't know that I would anticipate him having... Uh, I think Halak will... Halak's still a good goaltender. I don't know that he's still a starter. 
Um, Kerry Lettinen's listed here. I'm not going to discuss Lettinen because Lettinen is is he he's in that range where he could be on his way back to Europe. He's 33. His stats have been poor this season. They've been okay, but his stats have been poor. So I don't know that there's going to be a lot of interest in him. Lettinen would need to take a, probably a, 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 a huge drop in, in salary, and he might make more money in Europe than he'd make over here. Uh, Cam Ward I'm not putting on the board because Cam Ward's either going to stay in Carolina or somebody's going to give him just a, a million. Um, interesting guys on this list. One that could be interesting, only because he shows flashes of what made him a popular pick back in the day. He's only 29, 2.75 million. Uh, Bernier could get that amount again in free agency. He hasn't played fantastic for Colorado, but it's Colorado. Uh, you you don't you don't look at Colorado and say, oh, their, their goaltending is just fantastic. Um, but you don't look at any part of Colorado and say, oh, this part of their team is fantastic. So maybe Bernier's playing behind a poor team. Maybe Bernier's not that great. But then again, look at Bernier and Anaheim. Oh, but Anaheim's a really good team, so. See, it, you can argue it both ways. Uh, Johnson's on the list. He's 31. 34-year-old Niemi's on the list. Andrew Hammond, he's not in the NHL. Hutchinson's not there. See, as I said, with goalies, it's a lot smaller market. It's a lot less competitive because goalies get locked up long-term. So if you're going to say, oh, well, our, our team can look in the offseason for help in net, you're, you're not going you're not likely going to find it. Like Hudobin. Hudobin is 31. He makes 1.2 million in, in Boston. He makes he's he's definitely been more important to them than that 1.2 million would state. But Hudobin is not the answer in net for anybody. Um, it's so if if your team's looking at acquiring a goaltender, it, it's not going to be anybody in UFA because I don't see anybody UFA for 2018 that I say yeah unless somebody gets bought out. But anybody who's getting bought out, and there'll be buyouts between now and July 1st, underachieved this season or last season or a combination thereof, like, for instance, in Vancouver, Louis Erickson would be an example. Uh, so so buyouts aren't guys you're looking at and saying, we're going to throw tons of money at them, unless you're the Flyers. The Flyers do that every now and then. But uh, and, and I could see the Flyers acquiring a goaltender. I could see Neuwirth going at the end of the year and one of these three guys being brought into Philly, especially Hudobin, who would come in at a, a decent cap hit. So there you go. Uh, it, I don't think the 2018 UFA market is is going to be fantastic. I think a lot of it comes down to Tavares and, as I mentioned, probably Bailey as well. Do you just trade out Tavares and throw a bunch of money at Bailey? Or do they try to argue to Bailey, well, your numbers were only good because of Tavares? It could be an interesting fight to be had right there. Uh, you guys can let me know what you think about that. Uh, who you think is flying under the radar with the upcoming UFA class. And it's not too early to look at this. We've we've already seen a, a big trade with Duchesne, and there are certain teams that are falling off the map who have rentals, like, for instance, New Vander Kane and Buffalo, who could say, you know what? We'll get more for him now than we might at the deadline. We'll get more pieces now. Or they may look at their team and say, all right, he's not in our long-term future. We can still salvage this season. Let's move him now and not wait until the deadline. Again, let me know what you guys think. Hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way around the internet and you happen upon this video. Thank you for watching. I'll talk to you again soon.